So what's the best GPS dog fence? Well, today we're gonna to put it to the test. Recently, I had the opportunity to test three of the highest quality GPS dog fences side by side to compare their performance. And as you'll see in this video, there's a clear winner. I took the spot on GPS fence, the Halo Collar, and the Wags Freedom Collar all out for a walk on a bright and sunny day just seven miles from downtown Boston here. And I'm gonna let the results from my field testing speak for themselves, because they tell a better story than I can. And while you should stick around and see for yourself, I'm gonna tell you right now that the spot on GPS fence is paws down the best option for pet parents who are looking for a GPS fence that that reliably holds the boundary lines every single time. And that's nothing against the WAGs and the Halo. They definitely have their place for pet owners. They're just not equipped to perform at the same level as the spot on. And make no bones about it, price is gonna be a major deciding factor for a lot of pet parents. And whether you choose the spot on, the Halo, or the WAGs, make sure to use my links in the description of this video to get the best deal that I'm currently aware of. Right now I have exclusive spot on and WAGs coupon codes for our viewers, and I'll always keep those links up to date. Now let's see how these GPS dog fences performed in the field. What's up dog lovers, I'm back at it today. It's a nice sunny day out here, so I'm gonna give a, another shot with the three GPS dog fences that I've tried here. The WAGs, the Halo, and the Spot On. When I did this yesterday, there was some decent cloud cover. The Halo and the WAGs didn't really perform so well, so we're gonna go ahead and see if maybe cloud coverage had something to do with that. See how it goes. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna give this one a try with the WAGs here, and I'm gonna approach the border now. Should be any moment now, but so far it's not going off. All right. So we're well outside the border here and the WAG still has not initiated any sort of correction, alerted the dog that it's time to turn back. When I looked at the WAGS app, I could see that the dot from my phone was well outside the fence, which was correct. But the caller, however, was showing up inside the fence. I verified that the geofences were active and on and the WAG should have been sending correction signals, but it wasn't. I even issued a manual correction just to make sure and that worked just fine. Based on my previous experiences with the WAGS, I'm sure that if I had stuck around, it would have eventually updated the location and sent a correction signal, but that's not what I was testing here. Check out my WAGS review video if you're interested in learning more. I'll leave a link to that video right here and also in the description of this video. All right, now let's see how the Halo collar performed. The icon for my collar did seem to be tracking my location a little bit better, but it definitely wasn't one for one. But let's give it a try. All right, so now let's see how the Halo works as we approach the boundary up here. And let's see how it goes. Still nothing here. Still nothing. And we are well outside the boundary once again, and the Halo has yet to alert whatsoever. No warning, no alert, anything like that. So when I looked in my app, I was holding my phone right next to the collar. And while my phone's location was displaying correctly up by the road, the collar was showing that I was still within the fence boundary. But eventually the halo caught up. The halo did ultimately catch up where I was. It was quite a bit of time after I'd been outside the boundaries. And as you saw on the screen recording, I was quite outside the boundaries. Um, you know, it didn't give any sort of warning, just started right in with the correction. You know, definitely not really the most reliable way to do it, I would say. I'm just gonna walk back out here and see if I can get it to trip again. Again, I'm well outside the, the boundaries here. By the time I'm on the road, it's, it's well outside, so nothing going on. I'm gonna walk back in, see what happens. Oh, now it's alerting. Let's see if I walk back all the way to the center. It's still alerting here. It's still alerting. Now it's just giving the warning. So now I'm back inside the fence as far as the halo is concerned. So let's see what happens if I turn around and, and go back out to the border. And by now, the halo was just alerting a second ago and it's not now, no warning, nothing like that. Let's keep continuing here. Nothing, absolutely nothing. I'm just really surprised that this is so detached from what the actual border is set to be. All the way back up here, just about to the road now, and it has no idea. So basically what's gonna happen is at some point, right now, it just went off. Your dog's just gonna get randomly shocked. No idea why, because it's been trained to think that the boundaries over where you set the flags, and when they go past them, they don't get any sort of warning. Just out of nowhere, they're gonna get shocked. So not really loving the technology in this here. Check out my Halo Collar review if you wanna learn more and see me get shocked. I'll leave a link to that video right here and also in the description of this video. So next up is the spot on. And while the app doesn't show the location of my phone, the location it was telling me for the collar was pretty much in line with where I was standing. As I moved around with the collar in my hand, the app didn't refresh with my location instantaneously, but whenever I tapped refresh location, it did correctly update within a second or two. And what's most important is how the collar itself works. Does it alert in the same location every time you cross? All right, so now let's see how it goes with the spot on. I'm gonna be walking towards the border here now. Oh, and there it's given the warning. 
just like it should. If I walk further, correction right there, like clockwork, unbelievable. Back to warning, gone. Dog's back in the boundaries. Let's try that again. Warning. Correction. Warning. Boundary. One more time, <laughs> just to show I'm not making this up. Warning. Correction. Oh, there's a dog here. <laughs> Warning. Boundary. It's shocking to me how much more reliable the spot on fence is compared to the WAGs, the Halo. I can't even believe that those other two are sold as GPS fences if that's how they work. It's a little insane. This thing, on the other hand, is spot on, reliable. If you're gonna train your dog on this, it's gonna understand how it works. The other two just seem to kind of have very spotty GPS, very jumpy GPS. In the case of the Halo especially, it just goes right to correcting your dog. Uh, you know, if you're using that static correction, your dog's just gonna be getting shocked and really not understanding why, because the whole training logic's flawed. Watch, I know that the, the border's right here. Warning. Correction. Warning. Nothing. It just, <laughs> I don't know, proof's in the pudding, I think. If I was just to keep walking up there, as I was doing earlier with the halo and the wags, and then all of a sudden it starts going off, how would I ever know as a dog, you know, <laughs> what the rules are and what, what game I'm supposed to be playing. It's really not even fair to them to be doing that. So the satellite and the spot on is really spot on. Note that in the clip, I was saying that the spot on was issuing warnings and corrections, when in actuality it was issuing alerts and warnings. Only if I had continued on past the warnings would it have issued a correction. So clearly the spot on performs well on a sunny day, but how does it perform in a snowstorm? It's another beautiful day in Boston here, which is to say, more of this garbage. But anyway, let's see how the spot on handles it. I'm gonna hold it real close to my mic because it's hard to hear with all the background noise from the snow clouds out here. All right, that's the alert there. That's the warning. Correction. All right, let's back up. Alerting. We're safe. Let's try it again. Alert. Warning. Correction. Wow, insane, it's like clockwork. And uh, I mean, look at the sky out there. Who's gonna even have their dog out in this stuff? Not for very long at least. Anyway, it's getting cold out here. I'm gonna go hit up Dunks for a nice coffee. Yo, big time, you watching the Bruins game tonight? So there you have it, my friends. Even on a wicked cloudy day, the spot on holds the boundary strong and steady. And that's always been my experience with the spot on. It just works every single time. Clearly the spot on is the top performer. Check out my spot on review if you want to learn more and see me get shocked. I'll leave that video playing right here. That said, the halo color still has a lot to offer at a lower price tag, although I'd caution against using the static correction with the fences. And at over $1,000 cheaper, the WAGs can also be a great tool for pet parents. Whichever you choose, remember to use my links in the description of this video to get the best deal that I know of. I'll always keep those up to date. And until next time, dog lovers, keep those tails wagging.